If you follow me on Instagram from back a couple of years or so ago, you'll remember that I posted up a big, giant MTD hoard that I bought. Um, it was an MTD hoard that I bought for $100. There were seven MTD chassis in there, and I posted up a picture of my truck and trailer loaded with five of them. And then, well, my divorce happened. So now we're back on this project. So what is this thing? I ended up getting this from a guy that just needed to clean out. He was living in a trailer park. The landlord had told him no more tractors, no more small engines, no more junk. And junk is definitely what most of everything he had was. So I told him I would take all of the MTDs as long as I got this project. Now, these are 42-inch snow blowers that were created by MTD. The model number on these is OEM190032. And they have a biblical size user's manual, operation manual. And the reason being is because it's 32 pages worth of universal fit snowblower and what i mean by that is this particular snowboarder was designed to fit on everything from 19 late 1998 1999 all the way up through to the current mtd based machines that are selling now including the huskies and the craftsmen's and the troy belts the white tractors from back in the early 2000s, like this one, along with just about any Cub Cadet that is MTD-based and yard machines. So what that ended up meaning is that this plate here, depending on whether you had a manual attachment, whether you had a electric clutch, or whether you had a 50, uh, 52 inch, 54 inch deck, or whether you had a 42 inch deck, or whether you had whatever, there were different belt sizes, different ways that it was set up, but it's a universal setup. So that's why we have the biblical size owner's manual. As I almost trip over the broom from cleaning up my garage. So, the first thing to do here is we're going to see if this tractor will even run. When I got it from the guy, he said it had been sitting for three years already and that he didn't even know whether it would run or not. So for those of you who follow me over on RCG Racing, I'll post up a little clip here. This is the small mod racer that I built for the last race of the year. And it ended up not in last place, but pretty close to it. And part of the reason was because I left the governor assembly in the motor. And I left it so that the governor was still attached and everything. And that's because I wanted to make sure I had that 17 horsepower motor out of it to be able to plow and snow blow this winter if need be. So that's the reason why it is that that motor never got changed out no matter how many times you guys yelled at me. All right, that's enough babbling. Let's get started. All right, so we figured out there's parts missing out of this kit, but luckily I'm pretty sure we have the right tractor to be able to hook it up. So if you have the type that has the cable engagement that is right here, the cable PTO engagement. There is supposed to be a piece right here and your cable engagement hooks up here going this direction. And that is shown right here. So we do not have the cable engagement type. Over here, this is why it pays to read directions and think ahead before doing anything. So this belt here, first of all, I have no idea why it is it's so giant. 
And second of all, they have it running in under here and out and around here in underneath everything when it needs to go around the pulley here and then go under the tractor. So I'm going to figure out unpinning all of this and unpinning all of this. We're going to drop this entire assembly off of here because A, I need to get this running or I need to engine swap it. And B, that plate is supposed to be on the machine before you ever touch the rest of it according to this 32 page hell all right i'll be back all right i don't always say that you should read directions but for the love of whatever you believe in please do when you're dealing with something complicated so, my friend Mark came over and helped me with pushing this around along with about 13 other tractors one day in order to help me with cleaning up. And we ended up having to just brute forcibly move this thing around. These are supposed to pivot. That is supposed to pivot. That one there is supposed to pivot. That one there is supposed to pivot. Some previous owner had decided to drive every single one of them in as if they needed to stay until the dinosaurs came back. You know, please, please, if it's overcomplicated, read the bloody directions. They were free on the website. I'll even post a link to them in the description. All 32 pages of hell. Okay. So, now that I'm done ranting, I managed to go and get the belts freed up. So, the belts are no longer rust welded to the very dry pulley. That very dry pulley I'm expecting to be bad, so I'm glad that I have two spares. Um, if you're looking for those, I'll make sure to post a link for them. They're a little hard to find sometime. So, anytime you do one of these, you want to check your CVT and you want to make sure that it's good. Somebody apparently found an extended bolt and put an older MTD CVT on. Its bearings are shot. Listen. Mm. So luckily we caught it before burning out brand spanking new belts. I've got another CVT in there that is the appropriate one. The CVT that goes on these models is supposed to have a welded in bolt it's not supposed to be able to be taken apart so somebody swap this in and so we've got it in what should be neutral and this thing moves around and it does lock into gear so i'm gonna bet that's okay so now let's see here let's check the oil if we can there's definitely a mouse nest in this motor oh yeah that's lovely that's the color of Mickey Mouse, so that needs to be on Mickey Mouse. And if we come over here, we can see that most definitely Mickey Mouse has been inside of here making a home. So we're going to zip that cover off of there before we try and fire it. Because if that coil is just chewed off mouse poop, then we're wasting our time. So the moment you see Mickey Mouse bedding coming out, take the top off. All right, mouse nest reveal, take two. Oh, we're stuck on the starter. Stupid thing. There we go. There. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Can you tell this was stored near a chicken coop? So, I bet that'll burn pretty good. Let's see here. There we are. All the better to be done with this. Bye-bye. 
Oh, don't that feel nice. If you don't have one of these for your wood stove, you really need to buy one. It helps circulate everything. It's really nice that in a quick glance you can immediately tell whether the wood stove is cooled down or not. Yep. Some mouse just got homeless. It's okay. I'm sure there's some government program for that. Alright, so... Now, oh, we got lucky. It went all the way around that coil without ever chewing it up. Oh, no, there's one spot there, but it's not too bad. And yeah, the rest of it looks fine. So, I would say at this point, so I've been taking this and going through and hitting it with PB Blaster in order to try and get this moving. This is stripped out, they usually are, but if you just put a self-tapping screw into there, that's usually the easiest fix. And this pivot here on the back side gets all gummed up when they sit, see all the rust? That's because the mice like to build a bed here, and then they usually find some place to go and take a dump that's within about six inches or so from their bed. So they come over here, and they take a dump, and they pee, and it comes right down through here, and it rusts it. The other place that they'll do that is they'll come off of here, and they'll come into this little piece, and they'll decide to take a dump and pee right on the starter. So this starter seems to be doing okay. And, oh, I spoke too soon. That doesn't actually seem to be moving. Well, we'll hit it with something, and we'll see what it does try this again with a starter that is semi better. The teeth on this starter are definitely worn out and uh, some idiot called Redneck Computer Geek apparently put it back together backwards. The, uh, the stud is on the wrong side but you know whatever. Let's see what happens if we give it some starter fluid. Go go juice. Take one. I think I might have bad connections with my battery pack here. Because I just was able to bench test it. There we go. Oh, we thought about it. Oh, boom. That's a hell of a backfire. That thing's got a valve out of adjustment, probably. Alright, well, we'll give it a little bit more go-go juice just to see. Missed. There we go. Okay. Choke. Oh. Yeah, that was good. Ah. All right. We need a gas tank and a carburetor to go from here. Well, there's the carburetor, and as you can see, that is filled with all kinds of gunk. I can't get the light to show it, but you can see chunkies all the way down in. So we unscrewed that. That's got the stupid little thing that we need to remove if we try to use this anyway. Solenoid. And there it goes. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, yeah. We're not going to bother trying to rebuild this one. So, let's see here. Well, on that note, we could rebuild one of the... Who knows how many. Alright, so this carburetor is new-ish. It was on another project that I tried to start up and decided that connecting rods were optional and looked better in about five pieces. So... It should be a good carburetor to work with. So let's give this thing some juice and let's see if it'll actually choke up and run on its own.
Alright, well at this point I'm going to pull the valve cover off. I'm going to make sure that it's not entirely out of, out of tune on the valves. And go from there. Pull the spark plug, make sure to clean that off. We'll try again in a sec. Well, we pulled the spark plug, we cleaned it up, we checked the valves. They seem to be a little bit on the tight side, not loose like I was expecting. Which means I'm going to bet somebody tried to get this running and then gave up on it. So let's try it now that the spark plug is dry. Whoop, might help to have it plugged in. Oh, and I spark tested it, it's firing really good. smoke answers the question on whether that dry belt system is any good. I'm going to take that as a no. Unfortunately, it is a torrential downpour out right now and I can't get to my lift. So we're going to wait a day or two and get back to this project later. Well, I would say that pretty well demonstrates why it is that I need to get this snowblower figured out. I won't even come out of there. Well, that was useless. All right, so I'm gonna lift this thing up. I'm gonna change the belts on it. I'm gonna do a separate how-to video on changing the belts and that'll get posted before this video actually shows up. So if you haven't seen that video, It'll already be posted on the channel. If not, well, go back and look for it if you're interested on installing belts on one of these newer MTDs. Alright, so at this point, we've got the deck engagement lever system hooked up. And so, down in underneath, there's this stupid plate that, after reading the directions about seven dozen times, we just kind of said the heck with it and wung it. So, there's a pin here, a pin here, and there's two matching pin holes on the other side. And what John and I discovered is on the other side, there's only two holes to choose from. On this side, there's four holes to choose from. So make sure you line up the other side first and then do this side. So if I stick this down here and John punches the lever, there we go. That engages it so that you can see. And go ahead and disengage it. And that brings it out of engagement. So it ended up being a 70 inch half inch belt. 70 by half inch ended up being the right size to fit this. All right. Now let's see if we can hook up the rest. All right. So here's the next purgatory on this thing. So up front here, you've got this slide in. And that slide in matches to that. And then you've also got to get this pin through that hole in order to hook this system up. Wish me luck. Right now we're on attempt number two so far. So somehow I've got to figure out how to lift this up. I think what I'm going to do is just kind of lift it and put it on some 2x4s or something. So that, that way you can drive in like a Fisher plow setup. Alright, so we had to hook up this and slide it over the top of that first, then manage to monkey it until it hit that, and then in underneath where this bar is, we had to get this one in. And of course this bar was bent, so it didn't want to go in worth a turd, but whatever. 
And then we've got this tensioner going on here. And of course the spring was missing. So we've got a piece of coat hanger and an MTD brake spring in there. And at this point, John, if you turn the handle, we, will it move? Nope. Okay, so of course, that's apparently not working. How about the up and down here? What about the lever, the up and down lever? Oh, hey, at least that works. Hey, this works too, it's just I'm not strong enough. This works, you're just not strong enough? Oh, there we go. So we got that working. And can you put your weight on it? And if John puts his weight on it, and I put my weight on this side, there we go, it lifts. Unfortunately, the lock-in pin doesn't work. There's supposed to be a lock-in over here, which is what this lever goes to. And the lever is working. The uh, cable piece is working, the pin is lifting, but the bottom where the pin's supposed to go is worn out. I'm really not that worried about it, but if I have to, I can turn around while I hold that thing up. At 200 pounds, it's really easy to move. I ain't mean, here. Look, if I sit here and I put just one hand on it, because I'm holding the camera with the other one. So, obviously, I can drive and lift at the same time. So, we're going to fire it up, and we're going to see if it'll do something in just a sec. Alright, so here we go. Moment of truth. We apparently were lied to about just about everything to do with this thing. So, now we're at the point we see whether the snowblower actually functions or whether we got lied to about that, too. We ended up with water in the gas. So, here we go. What are you having? Grilled cheese sandwich. Grilled cheese. So we need some more grilled cheese sandwiches because what's cheesy on this thing is the wiring harness. And I don't feel like adding any more to this video. So I'm going to wire in just a generic push button wiring harness on this. If you need info in order to make one of these simplified and into a push button setup, I'll post something down in the link for you. But, John, do you think that's good enough for winter? Yep. We going to be able to plow our, well, snow blow our third of a mile long driveway now? Yep. You want to say goodbye? Bye. Sandwich is more important, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Okay.